When I was 10 years old, I saw a black and white photograph of Mount Everest. There were these soaring rock walls and hanging ice cliffs and a pointy summit scraping the sky at 29,000 and 29 feet. I was captivated. I think that's the day I decided that someday I wanted to become a climber. And when I got older, I became a climber and I learned how to rock climb and I learned how to ice climb. And I also became a geologist and I studied how mountains form and why glaciers move. And after three decades of being a climber, I decided in 2015 the time had finally come for me to try and climb Mount Everest. But I knew at age 52, trying to climb the world's highest peak was going to demand all the strength and focus I could scrape together. I also knew my friends and I weren't going to Nepal to conquer the mountain, because nobody can conquer a mountain. We were going to climb Mount Everest to challenge ourselves, because challenging yourself refines you into a better version of you. Now you might be thinking, I don't plan on climbing Mount Everest anytime soon, so how is listening to these climbing stories going to help me with my career or my life? If you'll come with me on this adventurous journey, from these intense experiences, we'll distill out some hard-won lessons about how to have a resilient mindset for overcoming change, challenge, and uncertainty. So let's see what Mount Everest and other big mountains can teach us about being resilient. Now, when I first started climbing, I started in New England. I climbed on small rock faces and moved on to bigger rock faces, and I started ice climbing. And let me show you a little something about the gear when we go ice climbing. Now, when we go climbing, of course, for safety, we always have a helmet on. And I guess these days, probably a mask too. I'm skipping the mask because I'm filming from home today. But the important thing when we're ice climbing is in our hands, we have these ice tools, ice hammers, and we swing them over our head like a carpenter and swing the pick in about a half inch. And that gives us some traction. And for protection, when we're snow climbing, we use pickets or snow stakes and we pound them into the snow like that and clip the rope to it. And for ice climbing, we use ice screws, about six to nine inches long, really sharp teeth. We turn it into the ice and then clip into it with a carabiner and some nylon webbing could do about 4,000 pounds. And that's how we protect ourselves when we're ice climbing. So we use that gear to protect ourselves when we're climbing the rock and the ice and when we go on big expeditions. I spent about 10 years climbing across the United States and then I started working on smaller expeditions in Alaska and South America and even went over to Nepal as well. Now, when we go on these expeditions, we have to deal with the high altitude. We're gone for an extended period of time. We took students down to climb in Bolivia. And then we also went up to Alaska, highest peak in North America, 20,320 feet. And when we went up there, of course, tough weather in Alaska. And that's when the storms start becoming a factor. You see, I've been in storms for two days here, three days there, five days somewhere else. And there's something important I've learned by dealing with all those storms. And the number one thing to remember about surviving storms is that all storms end.